feels good to be sweat. Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Phillies. That's the video cast to recap in tonight's game. It's on the Filthy Phillies and the Tampa Bay Rays. As the Phillies lose 7 4 to the Rays as they get swept out of this quick two game set, like I predicted last night. Uh, so today we're joined by. Uh, Philly Sports content making his fourth appearance on the show. So, Joe, thanks so much for coming on, man. Uh, thank you for having me, man. Of course. Thank you guys for bringing in this video. Please subscribe if you have not yet. Please turn on the bell. Please like this video, comment on this video, share this video, and let's get into this. Um, so, uh, I hate getting swept. Uh, it's just so annoying, right? I mean, thank God we won the 2008 World Series against these guys. Uh, but uh, I just really, really just hate losing, and uh, we're now back to 500, right? We were doing whatever we could to try to get back to 500, and we accomplished that by getting to 500, right? We work our way back down to 500, um, so I'm just, it's just a very discouraging loss, right? And then another shaky start with Zach Weir. I put this loss mostly on Joe Girardi, uh, but uh, what did you make of this loss tonight for the Phils? Just sloppy play. I mean, I'll get into the Girardi in a minute. Uh, defense was absolute horrendous. I mean, I understand what Hoskins m missing a couple balls, but he's playing 40%, maybe 50 with that full groin. McCutcheon dropping that top fly didn't help him. Just, just a flat out not good game. Freddie Galvis making an error. There's too many mistakes. I mean, yeah, I, I agree that, um, what's it? Girardi should have pulled Wheeler, but, I mean, to be fair, I mean, yeah, Wheeler did have 10 strikeouts, but Wheeler wasn't the sharpest one either tonight. So, I mean, it's just, it's just inconsistent yeah, that's, that's continue to haunt in this uh, team. I agree, man. Uh, as we jump into the scoring summary, and it's bound to take an inning, the Phil's going to board first, right? As Luke, Luke Williams grounds into a double play, uh, and Andrew McCutcheon comes around to score. Of course, Luke Williams was not great with the RBI, and it makes sense. And it's now one nothing Phil's. Andrew McCutcheon trots home as the Phil's score first. And you, when you score first, what do you do? You put the pressure on your team. Always talk about that. And uh, like I said, it doesn't, sometimes it doesn't do much dividends, right? Didn't do it in this game. Um, so one up the Phillies here to pick it up. Top of the fourth inning, as Joe talked about, uh, right? I mean, uh, we didn't. We certainly didn't help Zach Blue around at all, right? I mean, uh, you know, kick the ball around over the place and not really making some of the you know fundamentally sound plays that Major League Baseball teams should make. As Andrew McCutcheon drops a fly ball out left field uh, by Joey Wendell. And Wander Franco comes around to score as the Rays tie it at once. So uh, just bad defense all the way around. Andrew McCutcheon continues to be a defensive liability out there in left field. It's just, it's just We've seen it pretty much all year. Uh, then we pick it up, same inning. Uh, Yandy Diaz singles on a grab ball to right field. Uh, a diving stop by Reese Hoskins, right? You saw he got down there. Uh, and Joey Wendell comes around to score, and it's now 2-1 Tampa Bay. So the Rays now take the lead right there from Diaz uh, off of Zach Wheeler. Uh, right, so then we pick it up top of the fifth inning. Brandon Lowe homers on a fly ball to right center field, his 30th of the season. Uh, and it's the Rays now extended lead now 3 to 1 boggy. So uh, Brandon Lowe, a guy that's had a very, very good year there for the Rays, of course, now joining the 30 home run club. Um, so uh, that ball was pretty well hit. Uh, it's now 3-1 to one Tampa Bay. Then we pick it up. Bob in the fifth inning. Bryce Harper, right? And he got a hold of this one, folks. I knew it right off the bat. I was kind of feeling a heart prone run in this at bat. I could just kind of sense it. Uh, and I can sense when he strikes in. I can kind of sense when he's getting a home run as he launches a home run. Uh, center field, right? That ball was just murdered. A two-run shot also scores. Gene Gene, the hit machine, his 24th of the season. Uh, and the Phillies now tied at three. So, uh, Joe, what did you think about at that point, right? Did you think that the Phillies would come back? And now, you know, of course, now they tied. Did you think they were going to win this game at this point of ball game? You have to feel confident. Obviously, Ace is on the mound. Um, the three three game there. Hopefully, your offense can get you some runs. But obviously, that didn't happen. I think we only scored one more after Harper's homer. But I mean, going along with what you said about Bryce, it's, it's just good to see him hitting home runs with guys on base. After all those solos that he had, get that RBI count up. Dude's been insane. I think he's now batting 290 something. He's definitely one of the front runners for MVP. Yep, I agree with you, man. He would pick it up top in the eighth inning. Randy Rosarina grounds out uh, to Freddie Galvis in short. And uh, Wanda Franco comes around to score. So an RBI ground out right there for Randy Rosarina. 
Uh, and the Rays now retake the lead, now a four to three ball game. Uh, so it didn't take them, uh, you know, too long, right? I mean, uh, the game was tied for a little bit. Uh, then we pick it up on the eighth inning. We answer back right after Bryce Harper grounds on a double play. Uh, now Philly Sports content was pretty annoyed. They said that Harper didn't really hustle down the line. Uh, you know, Bryce hit that ball pretty hard. Uh, but then Reese Hoskins, right with two ounces, as, as Joe said, he's not really feeling 100%. Uh, and, uh, you know, I tell you what, I mean, also Jari, I tell you, you got a hold of this ball. You know, Reese is, you know, usually Reese's home runs are not cheap. As he almost done a 5 ball to left field, uh, number 27 on the year, third since coming off of the IL. Uh, I tell you, I mean, that was a really, really nice swing. The Phillies now tied it for it. So a nice solo shot right there for Reese. Right, he crushed that ball to left field. Now we pick it up top of the ninth inning. Just a bad decision from Joe Dorotty. Why are you leaving, leaving Zach Wheeler in here, man? I mean, I understood it the other day with Aaron Noah. Why in the world are you leaving Zach Wheeler in this game? I, I don't understand. This is not the time. This is not the time. This is where it kind of comes down to Girardi as Francisco Mejia, right? I mean, remember, yeah, remember all the hype around him? Remember, you know, the Indians, and he goes to San Diego, the Brad Hand trade, and, uh, you know, then he goes over to the Rays, right, in the, the Blake Snell deal. Uh, it's Gilmer Sunday, five ball, two right field. Uh, his sixth of the season, a three run shot, also scores Diaz and Kiermeyer, and it's now seven to four Rays. Uh, so the Rays now retake the lead in a big way, a three run lead. And at that point, we all knew the ball game was over. And that's your final. Sound of four. Your final scores. The Phillies get swept in their home ballpark. Joe, how did you feel at that point when that 3 1 home run was hit? Uh, you know, I, I felt shaky. I'm just irritated. It, now it makes it a second quarter game. Your offense ain't hitting it. it, it I, it's just over. I mean, yeah, you, you had a chance to get within four games to praise game, half game with them not playing today, and you failed to do it. I mean, you failed to execute. You need to need a, need a step it up. Need to be more consistent. I agree, man. I really agree with you. And uh, Gene Segura continues to just not be there at leadoff spot. Uh, he's now batting 288, right? So uh, he has just been really, really bad right over the past week and a half or so, right? I mean, to go take a look at his splits. His last seven, he's batting 115. Last 15, he's batting 175. Last 30, he's batting 230, right? You go take a look at his OBP, right? You know, 258 over, the, over his last seven. Uh, 192 slugging percentage, right? So he has just not been there. He has just really, really cooled off. JT Muto, uh, you know, Joe, if you want to talk a little about him, right, you're pretty annoyed with him. I understand you're a little bit concerned about that batting average at 262. Joe, if you just want to talk about that a little bit. No, no, like you said, I'm a little bit concerned. But, I mean, I think he's living up to the contract, big contract. He's living up to that. But only 13 home runs. I think he needs to – I know he's an all-around hitter, but I think he needs more than 13 home runs. He needs to start hitting a little bit more for power and more consistency. But, like, I still think he's the best catcher in baseball. His defense has been good for another runner out there. Just, just needs to be a little bit more consistent at the play, I feel. 262 is not where JT is. I like him on a 272. I agree with you. I, I think you're right about that. Bryce Harper – uh, collecting the two hits, right? I mean, you know, one of them being that that long around the center field, also singling to right. Uh, he looked uh, pretty good tonight. Uh, like like uh, Philly Sports Kenton said, in the race for the MVP, right? Uh, also mixing in that walk. Chris Haskins, oh, it was a big one. Uh, that uh, line drive over to the left, Andrew McCutcheon. I understand you collect those two hits, but I'm still pretty annoyed, right? I mean, uh, making that horrible defensive. Uh, I don't know what that was. That uh, you know, if you call it a play, I mean, that was just like a circus act out there. With him dropping that fly ball, that is just just terrible. Freddie Galvis, uh, you know, makes his first start as a Phil, you know, since uh, you know 2017, right? Uh, so welcome back, Freddie Galvis. He goes 0 for 3 with the walk. Um, so uh, you know, it's nice to see him get on base there. You know, his first at bat back. Uh, but, uh, you know, hopefully he does something next time you see him out there. Uh, and uh, Ronald Torres, so a nice little bounce back night for him, uh, you know, collecting two hits. He looked pretty solid. Um, so a nice job. And how about Zach Wheeler getting another hit, right? So, uh, you know, that nice line drive single up the middle. As you take a look at his start, eight innings. Don't let that fool you. I understand he went eight innings. Don't let that fool you because he allowed ten hits. Uh, it wasn't great by any stretch. Seven runs, only five were earned, right? Because we were kicking the ball around over the place. He didn't walk one batter. Uh, you know, that was pretty good. And you could tell he was hitting the strike zone. You know, of course, you know, that's why he allowed t uh, ten hits. And he struck out ten. Uh, so it wasn't the worst I've ever seen. But I, I wouldn't say this was good. I, I would not I, at all. I, I think it was a middle-of-the-road kind of start. Uh, now 10-9 and nine on the year. I don't really look at the record too much. Erie now climbs to 2-9-0. It's his climb. And climb. And climb. And climb it. 
Um, so uh, it's just getting higher and higher and higher. It seems like every time I see it. Uh, what are your thoughts on the recent Zach Wheeler struggles? I mean, there's no question that he's not been as sharp here in the second half of the season. I mean, it's questionable. I mean, I still think he's our ace. I still I think he, he's in the running for Cy Young, but I mean, he, your ace can't allow five runs a game. It's like Aaron Nola all over again. We need, like I said on my Instagram, we need these two, our two horses, to step up if we want to make the playoffs. And I think, I mean, Nola had a good game the other last time out, but these two, just, they haven't been able to rise to the occasion when we need them the most. And it's really going to start biting us especially when we start playing these bad teams. We need to win these games. These are winnable games. Got to cut this division lead down a little bit, but it's just a little bit frustrating. So rotation, I know it has this, it has the potential, but Wheeler, he needs, ever since the sicky stuff got banned, I mean, was he using? Right. Yeah. That's, that's an interesting, interesting point you bring up. And, uh, yeah, that, that was on uh, June the 22nd, right? That was, uh, that's funny you bring that up and, uh, you know, if you're going to go try to go take a look at his numbers since then, uh, I guarantee you're not going to be as good. Uh, that's a really, really good point. And Connor Brogdon came in uh, and was able to finish up that top of the ninth inning. But it didn't mean anything. I mean, this loss, in my opinion, you know, pretty much goes down on Joe Girardi mostly. Uh, he, he never, never should have let Zach Weir go out there and take the ball in that ninth inning. He never should have let that happen. Uh, and partly I feel bad for Wheels in some way, but... Uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just really, really annoyed about this loss. And you know, like Joe said, I mean, you know, the Braves get swept out by a legit Yankees team, and we can't even take advantage of it. I mean, the Mets have totally collapsed. Uh, so this is a very, very frustrating loss. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very, really burned up about this. And of course, you know, having a guest on, I'm gonna, you know, temper my frustrations a little bit. Uh, but I'm gonna show a little emotion. Uh, I mean, I don't really have much else to say. This is just the same story every single day. Uh, it just seems like this team sometimes just you know run you know tries to find new ways to lose. Uh, we all know the potentials there, and I think that you know you and I were talking about that before. Even though I believe this is the 500 team, I, I think it has the potential to be much much better than the 500 team um, because uh, I mean you go take a look at our talent. I mean we have a lot of talent. Uh, if you just want to talk about that a little bit, I mean your hopes for the future. You know, I still haven't even given up on this season, but our future is very bright. You got Bryson Scott. You still got Bone. Those two are. St- going to be studs. Bohm's going to figure it out. I'm telling you that. Gene, when he is hot, he is on it. We need him batting 280, 280 through 300. We have a second base. Shortstop, go out, try to get like a guy like Correa, maybe a senior. Third base, we're touched there. Or you can move Bohm to third and, and uh, left field and put Stodd at third. There's so many mm, options. I like that. This, this team has a good future. We have Nick Abel. That's and Hoskins and left all over again, dude. I agree. You mostly what you said, but that's, I mean, the Bowman left experiment would just be like Hoskins in 2018 out left all over again, in my opinion. You can't hide him in left field. I mean, Rhodes and I are talking about that too. You can't hide him in left field. Who knows, man? I mean, you know, that's, that's more of a, you know, got to assess him as an athlete himself. So, you know, I think he's a pretty versatile guy, but I mean, that, that's just kind of a tough task for him. Um, so uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, so the Phillies get swept out. As we got the Arizona Diamondbacks to town. Normally, I would feel pretty good, of course. I mean, yes, I understand. I mean, getting swept out, in my opinion, was kind of a fluke. And especially now that they're on the road, uh, I, I definitely don't think we're going to get swept out. But, uh, I mean, I don't feel good. I don't feel necessarily great at any of this series. I mean, how could you? After you after we just got swept with these guys last week. Gallon on the mound for Arizona. 1-7 and seven with a 4 5 90 rate going at Zach Eflin right now. He is back. He was reactivated 4-7 and seven with a 4 one seventy array. So, uh uh, Joe, thanks so much for coming on, man. I mean, uh, I, I don't know if I really mentioned this, but I mean, I understand there has been another Joe that has come on here, but uh, your official name on this on this video cast is uh, Philly Sports Content. Uh, but, uh, you know, when I, when I have you on here, I'm just going to call you Joe. So uh, thanks so much for coming on, man. Hey, no problem, man. Thanks for having me. Let's go, Phillies. Let's go sweep these Diamondbacks. Yep. Uh, so, guys, thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe if you have not yet. Please turn the notification bell. Please like this video, comment on this video, share this video, take out the social media, link in the description section at Phillies at Silver Instagram, Twitter, Instagram, call or text 267 225 3392. Email me, Phillies at Silver at gmail.com. So, 7 to 5, the first pitch tomorrow night, a gallon and effort. So, guys, thanks for watching. I am Luke, and I'll talk to you later. I was joined by Philly Sports Content. I'll see you guys.